and it tells in, uh, in backscatter is maybe about the technological part of it. Uh, how does it work with the multi-bit systems? And what is the future of the technology of this? Good morning, everyone. My name is Vincent Lecoul. I'm, uh, I just left the University of Florida and I'm now in a uh, university in Quebec. Um, I, my main interest in multi-beam backscatter is the end use side for a long time. I, I have always been interested in backscatter, but in Florida, we didn't have a system, so I never had it. I, I work a lot more with bathymetry, but now in my uni university, we're about to acquire a multi-beam nickel sounder and, and we're gonna try to make the most uh, out of it that we can, so that includes backscatter and trying to understand how we can best use it. Good morning, my name is Fazani uh, Reza. I am, uh, I replaced Xavier in the Ecomat team uh, four years ago, and uh, my address in backscatter is especially uh, calibration uh, for the MTB uh, system using the CDP. Oi, eu sou o Sérgio Fonseca, meu professor de Inglaterra de Brasília, Brasil. Eu vou te comentar um pouco sobre o Dexter. O meu interesse é modelo, físico modelo, e o estatístico do Dexter. É o mesmo modelo. Então, é isso. Oi, eu sou o Tim Lebar, eu sou do Centro Nacional de Estatística do Reino Unido, no UK. I've been using backs, uh, not, not being backscatter now, unfortunately, since 1997. Uh, very interested in what it can actually give us and effectively its interpretation. I'm now looking at automated artificial intelligence ways of maybe improving our, our interpretation for what it can actually tell us about this report. I'm Peter Forskamp, I'm a postdoc. Great Graham. I just moved here from Australia, where my supervisor is standing on the review of Kanu. Um, my main interest in multi backscatter is using uh, these surfaces and derivatives from the backscatter in order to predict uh, habitat events. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jake. I'm a PhD student at Craig and I'm Ethan Waller. I'm doing a postdoc here at Dell with Craig Brown. Uh, background is mostly in statistics and uh, ecology. My project is doing a incorporating some of the backscatter data into the species distribution modeling uh, maps. No background in backscatter, so I'm just here to learn. Um, this is Adola. I'm a GIS specialist in Craig's lab. Um, my interest is in Hi, I'm Craig Smith. Um, I have the Center for Coastal Ocean Mapping down at UNH. And in terms of my interest towards multi backscatter, I think the original started with Tom Weber working on a lot of calibration work um, has been expanded to the whole end of it, including backscatter processing and so forth. So, I am Ijona Fonseca, I'm a PhD student at UNH from the Bryan College. Um, my main interest is uh, applying deep learning methodology for processing bathymetry and how backscatter can be used to improve that. Hi, I'm Miguel Candiz. I'm a Portuguese Navy hydrographer. I currently work at the Hydrographic, the Hydrographic Institute in Lisbon. I first came across backscatter when I did my master's at the University of New Hampshire with Professor John Nick Spark. And then I found out this new world of backscatter despite dealing with multi games for a couple of years already. And my main interest right now is to bring that knowledge and to start working on backscatter. And my, but my main interest, I would say, it's uh, multi sector, multi beam uh, calibration. Um, hi everyone, my name is Claire Barr. I'm a master's student in Craig Brown's lab. Um, currently I'm focusing on using backscatter more on the 
application side of things for habitat mapping and also seeing how we can use it to look at bottom recovery and sites of dredge fishing. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jens Schneider uh, from Germany. I'm working with Jens University of Marine Geophysics and Hydrophysics Department, and I've been using Vitamin now since uh, 20 years. And I'm very much interested in inventing life and the geological, chemical, and biological modulations on the banks here. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, in person. I think what I will do here is just unshare my screen for a second, and then the virtual audience should be able to. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we can work through the online and just do it in alphabetical order. We've got some duplication here with people locked on from inside the meeting room. So let's just work our way down. I think the first person, Adriano. It was it was for me, yes, because my my internet is a little bit unstable, so I I don't hear you always very well. Okay, yeah. So if you can hear me, uh, yeah, I'm Alexandra Cruz. Uh, I am most of my life I've been working for science, and now I'm I work also for Norbit, uh, the company that is producing multi-beams. So my main interest is backscatter habitat mapping, uh, and I practically work uh, for putting sort of the bridge between science and technology, so to see what is needed and what we can uh, provide uh, with new technologies and how it can be used uh, for the development of backscatter habitat mapping and, and stuff. Thanks. Next up, I think we have Ben Emilia. Uh, hello, I'm a, I'm a postdoc in, in Craig's lab, actually. Um, I stayed home because I was sick over the weekend, but I am hoping to attend in person if I'm feeling better tomorrow. Um, but I'm interested in using backscatter on the application side and also methods for using um, multi-source backscatter, um, which is a, a, a main interest of mine. So I uh, hope to see everybody uh, tomorrow, potentially. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Graham. Graham Bond. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Graham Bond. I'm with the Canadian Hydrographic Service uh, here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, my interest in backscatter is uh, some of the kind of processing best practices, uh, as well as to determine what everybody else's interests in backscatter are. Um, CHS logs and catalogs backscatter but we don't particularly use it ourselves so um, it's just interesting to see uh, what that end use is and the, the varied uses. Okay. Next up Chris McGonagall. Hey Craig, hey everyone. Uh, good to see you all virtually albeit. Um, yeah I'm Chris McGonagall based at Ulster University in Northern Ireland. Um, and my interests in backscatter, I suppose, are quite varied, but increasingly I'm very focused on the applications end of things, 
particularly looking at environmental change detection, reproducibility, and uh, I suppose increasingly anthropogenic impacts uh, that, that we can use this additional information to try and determine. So I wish I could be there, but unfortunately I'm stuck in Port Stewart. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Chris. Uh, next up, we have Eric. Eric Mallard. You there? Sorry about that. I thought I was unmuted. Uh, my name is Eric Mellard. I work for HTEC, a sonar manufacturer. So I'm interested in hearing what the end users are doing with Backscatter and what the scientists are researching on it so that I can see how that could impact how I develop the new product for my company to offer a better solution for people using Backscatter. Can you hear us? Let's move on to Giuseppe. Hello, this is Giuseppe Masetti. I work for the Danish Hydrographic Office as well as the Center of Coastal and Ocean Mapping. I enjoy collecting, processing, and compiling the best culture. Hi, Craig. Um, had you had cold Giacomo yeah. before? <laughs> Hi, apologies for that. All the Italians all together. Uh, hi, everybody. Giacomo Montreal Gavazzi. I work for the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences, so live, living in Belgium at the moment, and interested in backscatter for several aspects. I think uh, Chris McConaughey pretty much said it for me, in particularly focusing on change detection. And very happy that uh, this uh, <coughs> event has been organized. So thank you for pulling it together. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Ian, Ian Parner. This be crazy hour for you, Ian. Oh, hi, everyone. Yes, uh, thanks, Craig. Thanks, Alex and Mark, for organizing this. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, my name is Ian Parnham. I'm based in uh, Perth, Western Australia at the Center for Marine Science and Technology at Curtin University. Um, yeah, uh, you know, had a, a long interest in backscatter, um, you know, some of the things already said by Alex and Tim, optimizing the, the processing and the analysis of the data, getting the, kind of getting the most out of it is, is my interest. I also sometimes wear, um, you know, um, uh, dip into other areas of underwater acoustics uh, as is the nature with our center. That's, uh, that's pretty much, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to back to some of the talks and maybe uh, some of those discussions um, in the next couple of days. But thanks, everyone. Okay. Uh, James. Hi, everyone. James Munga here. Uh, I work for QPS Canada, uh, based in Fredericton. I'm the product owner for FMGT. And I'm really interested in uh, improving backscatter processing. And I really enjoy uh, looking at backscatter maps. Okay. Now I'd like to hear Pedro, Pedro Nando. Hello everyone, I'm Pedro Nando. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate in Federal University of Spirit Santo with Professor Alex Bastos. And my main interest is applying multi spectral backscatter for Seabed classification. Pedro. Uh, Peter. Peter Urban. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Peter Urban. I worked for a long time at the Guillaume Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Kiel, and I recently moved to the University of Ghent in Belgium. And my research topic for my still ongoing PhD, but also for my new project, is quantitative methodologies for multi-beam water column data. And uh, I'll talk later about this a little bit, actually. Um, 
yeah, thanks for organizing this workshop. I'm very excited. Here, sorry, you couldn't make it with your cancelled flight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was actually originally planning to to be there and uh, very sorry I can't make it, very sad about it, but I'm very happy I can join online, at least. Next time, I think we have, okay. And it's my turn. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Tian Bai and uh, I'm currently a second year PhD student in TU Delft from Netherlands, so I'm living in Delft now. Uh, and my interest about backscatter is uh, in general seafloor mapping using multi-beam backscatter data, and especially in the um, distribution of um, uh, like benzos, such as marine species, uh, such as shells uh, and others. And also I'm interested in the use of multi-spectral multi backscatter data to uh, increase uh, like the ability of um, like uh, seafloor sediment uh, discrimination. Thanks. Yeah, I'm looking to your presentation. I think we skipped uh, in, in this. Uh, sorry, yes, are Good you... morning. Yeah. I, I think I heard my name. Um, my name is Pim Kus. I'm a product manager at uh, Telline Marine. Um, many years ago, I worked with Backscatter and I, I, I had the same problem that many people have trying to stitch data sets together. Um, right now, we still have the same problems. Um, I'd like to see in the future that Backscatter becomes much easier to be used and not just for specialist people like this group, but, but the normal users. So, um, that's that's a particular thing I'm interested in. Um, I'd like to learn uh, the next days uh, what things we can do to, to improve those things. Samuel. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Samuel Deleu. I work at the Flemish Hydrography, which is a Belgian hydrographic office. And the uh, main interest in backscatter is to combine it with the uh, huge amount of bathymetric data we have and to, to use it for uh, see bat um, interpretation and classification. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. One more on the list, is that Sebastian? Yes, uh, hi everyone, I'm Sebastian. Um, I'm from Belgium, but I work uh, in uh, the Netherlands at the uh, Delft University of Technology. Um, I'm a benthic ecologist uh, by background, uh, but since uh, about a year or so, I've been uh, working on uh, acoustic research on the same project as uh, Chen, who presented earlier. Thank you. Have I missed anybody online? Anybody who wants to join who hasn't introduced themselves? Good. Is uh, Jens here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more yet. <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, really great turnout. Delighted that we can all join. I'm, I'm sure there'll be others dropping in virtually. As we go through the next couple of days with the different time changes. Um, but, uh, what I wanted to do to start with is really just give a little bit of background about the workshop before we uh, have Xavier kick off with the keynote presentation. Um, so really this workshop came about, came about really from the light of the stars. Uh, we started talking about this particular event in GeoHab 2022 in Venice, which was the first time we've met in person for the GeoHab conference in a couple of years due to the pandemic. And there was certainly a lot of interest. We had a side meeting uh, about the backscatter working group. Um, and there was a lot of interest for you know, post-pandemic desire to get the backscatter working group back to work. Uh, we've been a little dormant for a couple of years, mostly because we weren't able to get together face to face. Um, and I had the opportunity through the Ocean Frontier Institute to become project. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because that's really what's funding this event. I just wanted to make people aware of 
how the banks that are interested in locally in, in Halifax. I'm going to introduce that shortly. And here we all are. So it's really been facilitated by the, the Come project, thanks to Ocean Frontier Institute, which is an institute here based here at Dalhousie. Um, it's really funding this event. And the goals of the workshop, um, we, we, we drafted these, Mark and Alex and I, um, in consultation with the Bike Scatter Working Group, uh, who which expressed an interest. Your PowerPoint presentation is actually Yeah, but I need to share the screen. It's not like a fucking lot. Okay, sorry about that, people. Hopefully, you can all online now see my slides. Um, the workshop goals. <laughs> um, I to present and uh, share information on current backscatter activities and projects that are underway. So, really, here what's been going on over the last few years when we haven't really been as active communicating <coughs> with each other. Uh, discuss the objectives, organization, structure of the Backstatter Working Group, so PSWG2. I'm not going to steal Xavier Thunder. He's going to talk a lot about this during his presentation. Um, but really discussing how we can come together as a, as a community to progress the field of Backstatter research. Identify research opportunities and gaps in this field and develop a roadmap for the future coordination of the PSWG. So this is really the main focus of the workshop, trying to get ourselves organized, identify those research gaps, and map out how we can work together going forward. So I wanted to start with a little bit of navel gazing. Um, really just to map how we got to the become project and just provide some context, uh, set my interests in, uh, in backscatter. Um, the backscatter pipeline um, is the long and complex workflow of the backscatterers are all well apart. Um, getting the data sets from sonars, post processing them, firing the data in the field, integrating other data sets for thematic map production, and then ultimately those maps are used by an end user. And we all work at certain points in this pipeline. My background is in benefit ecology. I'm very interested in understanding benefit ecosystems. So, you know, I, I'm very much focused in research elements up here. And I guess I started an interest in, in the seafloor mapping technology 20 plus years ago in the late 1990s, before we really had easy access to multi-beam backstabber. And I was one of those naive end users for a long time, um, really needed didn't really have a solid understanding of what backscatter was and the challenges associated with how we process it, how we use it, some of the problems in terms of uh, how we can better extract information from the backscatter for seafloor characterization. Uh, and I think it's sometimes good to think about the, the workflow and educate ourselves. And this, this goes in both directions. I think sometimes like the engineering side I think a good understanding of how those products are being used will help them understand uh, how we're using the data and what we need in terms of the information we can extract from that. So, you know, I think 
I fell down the backscatter rabbit hole, so to speak, uh, in the early 2000s. And you know, sometimes you feel a little bit lost. It's great to work with uh, colleagues like are uh, being assembled in this workshop where we can really exchange ideas and learn from each other. Um, so, you know, I, I started doing authentic mapping uh, when I worked for the UK government back in the late 1990s. And then we worked really using Multibeam. We didn't have access to Multibeam. We were using um, side scan sonar and acoustic, single beam acoustic frame discrimination systems. Still backscatter. Um, but over the last 20 years, as everyone in this room is well aware, the backscatter has come online. My first double with Multibeam backscatter, I pulled up this map. This is a Mingle area from Scotland. We collected it with a Kongsberg EM2000 system. The mosaic that we used is pretty pretty looking. Uh, but we got we got value out of it. You know, it was great to be able to start to use it. But there was no tools available for users like myself to actually process that data easily, generate a backscatter mosaic, and use that for understanding the ecology of this cold water coral. Uh, having a background in acoustic brain discrimination systems. That's really the driver for me, trying to understand the, the spatial patterns of the geology and the biology on the ocean floor. So I've always been interested in the backscatter characterization of different tools. Um, Quest for Tangent, the QTC View software, was one of the first um, <laughs> software packs that I started playing around with. Chris McGonagall is online, he's PhD on this at the University of Ulster. And you know, this was really, again, uh, a way to utilize that information, try and squeeze as much information out of the backscatter as possible. And in 2006, part of the Mapping European Seabed Habitats, I actually organized a backscatter workshop. Um, this was, this was the people in this room who actually participated in this, uh, in Coleraine, uh, in Northern Ireland, Luciano and Tim were both there. Um, this was when I fell down the backscatter rabbit hole, and uh, I don't think I've ever emerged since. But it was such an enlightenment for me as a as primarily a veterinary ecologist to learn a little bit more about um, how we can use the bank scatter and extract information from it. Um, Philippe Blondel, um, who supported that workshop, we, we guest edited an applied acoustic special issue. Um, we had eight papers there. It was, the community wasn't enormous. Um, it was around the time that we were starting to see tools like Geocoder. So doing some work with Luciano back then. Again, really excited to see we could squeeze more and more information out of the backscatter, looking at things like the signal that I'd never really thought about as a naive backscatter user. Um, around, around that time, these tools were starting to be commercialized and the hypergraphic software packages became more widely available for people working further down that backscatter pipeline. And exciting opportunities to really utilize as much information as we can on the backstab. And in 2013, this was really the start of the backstab working group. Um, another backstab workshop, and I don't think there's been a proper backstab workshop since this. We've, we've had the backstab working group have side meetings uh, alongside the two half conference, <coughs> but I think this is the first time we've come together face to face for a dedicated several day workshop. So really timely to have to do that. And of course, Xavier and Jeff Ball has immense effort to get the backscatter Bible written, which has really been a game changer, I think, for everybody working along that pipeline from the manufacturers, the software developers, the surveyors, the end users, all the way through. This has been such an influential document. I mean, I'll let Xavier provide a synopsis of how this came about. Um, and of course, my interest in multi-spec you know, has come along since. Uh, so we partnered uh, with Archisonic and QPS for some of the multi-spec work. I'm not going to say much about it here. I'm going to save that for my presentation tomorrow. But that really was what was the catalyst for the OFI Become project, partly, uh, which I want to kind of introduce now just to give you the context of where this backscatter workshop fits into the bigger picture with our Mission Frontier Institute. Um, program. So the project is entitled Benefit Ecosystem Mapping for Sustainable Ocean Stewardship and Shifting Ocean Climate. Uh, I lead this with Kathleen Maber, who's a, a professor at the uh, Memorial University of Newcomer. It's a multi-year, multi-million dollar 
program of research focused around ocean floor habitat mapping primarily. The, uh, the project type is the short term income, plenty of ecosystem mapping and engagement. And the overarching science question of the Become project is um, really to try and understand what role benthic habitat plays in controlling shifting patterns in species and biodiversity caused by changing ocean climate. It's very much embedded on the ecology. We need to think about the tools and the techniques that provide us that information. Uh, we have a large amount of project partners, so we try and connect industries, we've got private sector partners in here, we've got government agencies and a large number of um, academic institutions working together through a series of different work packages, which is the way that the project's been structured, um, for that common goal. So each, each of these work packages is almost like an individual project in itself. Um, so the big question is, um, well, certainly uh, because of the uh, climate, climate shifts and the changing ocean climate, there's predicted forward migration of many marine species um, due to climate, climate change. It's a complex interaction of abiotic and biotic factors that influence how those species will respond to climate change. A lot of those are unknown, but there's potential implications for benthic ecosystem health, function, and resilience. And many studies to date have predicted this forward migration of never really considered the benthic, any benthic maps or any benthic information because we don't really have growth scale maps uh, that, are, that are at a suitable resolution to help understand some of those questions. So we know, for example, that lobsters are moving north in this part of the world. It's a huge fishery, um, but most of the Scotian shelf, as we get up into Grand Banks and Labrador, we only have very limited amounts of multi beam data in particular. Most of, the, most of the information we have is growth scale forest resolution information. So the overarching question, can we, can we understand better how habitat is driving and controlling all of the species distribution? So we structured the project around a series of work packages. So we have everything from social sciences, where we're using things like local ecological knowledge and indigenous knowledge to understand where species were over a longer time, like always in science has records for, uh, and trying to predict what, what might be happening in terms of those species movements. Uh, we had a couple of mapping work packages for growth scale prediction, where we try and bring in growth scale bathymetric information and derivatives, look at the seabed morphology, um, of course, model substrate maps to see species change. We have work packages looking at fine scale mapping, where we do have things like multi -B trying to link it in with things like fishery stock assessment. And then really where this workshop fits, we've got a tools uh, component under work packages four and five. And these are looking at some of the emerging uh, mapping methodologies, synthetic after sonar, uh, ground truthing methods using scanning laser. And I embedded this in, if this is my interest in multispectral, as a key component of the Become project. So that's really where we're we're, you know, we're spending this um, workshop over the next few days. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the work that we're doing under this work package tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, really looking at the bigger picture. It's not just multi spectral, there's a lot of other things and information we can squeeze out of the multi beam vaccine. So, uh, our early work, and again, I'll expand on this tomorrow. Um, bottom characterization, we did some of the um, first trials in partnership with RG Sonic and PPS here in the Bedford Basin over a really complicated bottom, but it's a nice bottom just to demonstrate the benefits where we're seeing through superficial sediment to coarse material underneath. And you know, we've been extracting a lot of information and value from this data set trying to understand how we can use multiple frequencies, multiple grazing angles, multiple penetration depths to actually characterize um, the substrate of the seabed ecosystem. I'll expand on this as well. That brings us up to date. Um, that's really what's supporting us here. For, for those of you in the room, got some Wi-Fi goodies here. You guys can take a water bottles and um, 
and this possibly was uh, facilitating this uh, workshop. I wanted just to finish off before I hand it over to Xavier just to go through the agenda very quickly and let you know what's in store for the next three years. So the way we structured it, we, we started off with a few presentations, uh, which will take place with the rest of today and the first thing in the morning up until coffee. And we hope that they're not just science presentations. We're all very curious to hear what each other is doing. That's why I really wanted to have some forms of presentations in the workshop. But I'd like um, I'd like each of the speakers during the presentations to think about some of those questions identify where you feel there are research gaps in the backscatter uh, research world and you know share your thoughts about um, where the future of the backscatter will be with this and we'll do a deeper dive into these after the presentations during the breakout sessions it'd be nice just to capture some initial thoughts as you're presenting your own research so that takes us through until the close of today uh, 6 30 this, this evening Tomorrow morning, we have a few more presentations. And then after coffee, we'll be breaking out into groups. So we'll have some in-person breakout groups here. And we'll have some virtual breakout groups for the online participants. And we've got two sessions. Um, the first session, uh, we'll be talking about backscatter working with themes and research priority gaps. So thinking about how, what are the main hot topics that we should be talking about? whatever that might be. Um, I think we've already had lots of discussion about it over the last couple of years, but it's very interesting to see whether there's new ideas and suggestions that can come out of this group. Uh, so we'll have a one hour breakout and then we'll report back in plenary from each of the work groups and we'll try and capture some notes and, and get that down on paper. And after lunch, we've got another breakout session um, where we really want to start thinking about what does the bike scatter work in the next? Um, how do we organize ourselves? What, what do we want to achieve? The first bike scatter working group um, really led to that bike scatter Bible. So where do we go from there? I mean, there's lots of ideas, and it'd be interesting to see where people feel that we, we should go as a, as a bike scatter community. Uh, then we'll close around four o'clock. Um, now, on the last day, uh, we've kept this fairly fluid because we want to really try and synthesize all that information together. We're going to have some general plenary discussions uh, around what we've covered in the first couple of days. Um, really trying to lock down and define those themes, get ourselves organized. We'll be looking for enthusiastic individuals to volunteer to maybe lead some of those activities, uh, get involved in rebirth of BSWG or BSWG2, as we've been calling it. Um, and we'll wrap up uh, on Thursday afternoon. Um, we are looking for this is a workshop, so we're going to put you all to work a little bit during the next three days. Um, nice, get some volunteers. We don't have to do this right now, we can do it with coffee breaks, but having some help in terms of session facilitation so it doesn't all fall on myself and Alex and Mark. Uh, couple of people per session just to facilitate the conversations. Rapporteurs, getting some notes down. I can lean on my lab members who have been very helpful getting this organized to help with some of the rapporteuring, but nice to make sure we capture the conversations. Um, and of course, we'll need some breakout group leads uh, that can report back to the plenary. So we'll, we'll figure this out as we go through the workshop, get ourselves structured and capture that information. And our, our hope is we'll put together a report of some description after the workshop that we can communicate to the wider Blackscatter working group email list. Like 600 people on that list now? So no, not that much. Now we're at 300. Okay, so this, it's a big, it's a wide, a much wider community out there. So it'd be nice to communicate what comes out of this workshop back to, uh, to the rest of the community. Same thing. Think like this. There's just one point I wanted to mention is the fact that uh, the Baskatter Working Group, the first one, is focused on seafloor Baskatter, yeah. but there's not another more people interested in water quality. And they already were back in the original Baskatter, and we've been talking about 
whether we should include it or not. I think there's more and more interest in including it. There's a lot of people attending or presenting whose focus is on water quality. So I just want to make sure that uh, that clear for, for those of us who are listening to us who are not interested in simple bath color but are in water quality, that they are still in the current room and that that, that <laughs> <is not covered. laughs> Uh, just a point, um, <coughs> session five centers is not for two weeks for a week. It's for two months. For tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we are trying to. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank yes. you, Mark. Okay. So, and uh, here. you are all welcome to uh, to assist uh, for that uh, if you possibly are doing that. close to uh, you, Craig, uh, Alex, and myself. So, it's absolutely open to all of you. Any final points before we get Xavier set up for his? We just had a question from Ian asking if the slides would be available, so maybe we can put them in the That's a good point. We are, we are recording the sessions. Um, we realize that the time zones are challenging. So um, the session, the, the recorded presentations, as long as nobody objects to having their presentation recorded, uh, we're going to post them up on a YouTube channel that Alex has set up um, so people can review them after the fact. Yes, and for the, uh, so we still have that Dropbox for Basketball Working Group at the moment. So, so if people are happy with the blog, with providing also their slides, then we can use this for, for storage and then I'll just like send the link. Yeah.